Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. So this is Singchu, and as a matter of fact, he is not a she. So if you thought he was a girl, well, don't worry, you are not the first one. So anyways, few days back, somebody in my comments asked me to make a Singchu guide. So yeah, here it is. Also, he got a new skin, so I thought, you know, sounds like a good time to make a guide. Y yeah, what's my script? What the fuck? Anyways, ignore the disturbance. I will find my script soon. Yeah, who am I kidding? I don't have a script. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's start. Let's quickly go over Sincho's abilities, skate talents, and whatever you want to call it. His normal attacks, ignore them. His elemental skill deals quite a bit of hydro damage in two hits and creates rain swords. Now, what do these rain swords do? They do two things. First of all, they will reduce the incoming damage to your active character. And every time they do so, one rain sword will be consumed. And they will also increase your character's resistance to interruption. Pretty cool. That's a pretty nice rain sword. You can see the initial max number of rain sword is 3. But with these constellations, you can increase it to 4. And uh, he can also convert 20% of his hydro damage bonus into bonus damage reduction for the rain swords. So basically, it is 29% damage reduction at a baseline. But depending upon how much hydro damage bonus your Singcho has... 20% of that will be added to this value. So you can actually take it to like 40 or 42% damage reduction, which is pretty huge. His burst is the bread and butter of Singcho's kit. It basically creates those same orbital rain swords that you create in his elemental scale. However, this time they will not shatter when taking damage. They will last until the end of your burst duration. This ability also lets Singcho deal a lot of damage from off field while also applying a lot of hydro. Because every single time your active character performs a normal attack, it will trigger consecutive sword in attacks dealing hydro damage. Now this hydro damage looks kind of low here because it's only 103%. But keep in mind this is actually the damage of one single rain sword. And you will end up proccing a lot of those over the course of your entire burst. So this adds up to a lot of damage. And he also applies one unit of hydro every time you proc this burst, which is pretty cool. Now let's discuss his passive talents. So his ascension one passive makes it so whenever your rain sword shatters or whenever its duration expires, each rain sword causes your active character to heal based on 6% of Singcho's max HP. So with 3 swords, this is 18% of Singcho's max HP as healing, while with 4, it becomes 24%. His other passive just gives him 20% hydro damage bonus. Let's also talk about Singcho's constellations. Now, even though he is very much a complete unit at C0, his constellations do add a lot of power to him. So yeah. Let's begin. His C1, this only adds one rain sword to the orbital, so it's more damage reduction and more healing. I mean, it's not more damage reduction, but it is more healing. Yeah, it's not bad constel. It's not a bad constellation, but compared to everything else he has, it it, it kind of is the worst one. His C2 is amazing, possibly his second best constellation. It increases the duration of his burst by three seconds, which is a, a big deal. And whenever his burst coordinated sword rain attack hits opponents, it also reduces their hydro resistance by 15%. So it increases Singcho's own damage by increasing his duration and reducing enemy hydro, res hydro resistance. But also it makes it so that when you are playing more than one hydro in the team, Singcho also helps in increasing their damage as well. So C3 is just burst levels, pretty good. His C4 makes it so when you use Singcho's elemental skill after casting his elemental burst, the damage is just multiplied by 1.5. Pretty good if you want to nuke something. His C5 is skill talent levels. Uh, by itself, they are not that big of a deal, but because his C4 is so good, this is a pretty nice constellation as well. His C6 is his best constellation. After activating two of the sword in attacks from his burst, the third one is greatly enhanced. So by default, you do two attacks, then three, then two and three. This makes it so you do 
2, 3 and 5. So every third hit of your burst, it unleashes 5 rain swords which applies 1 unit of hydro but 2 times instead of just once like it regularly does. And every single time this special proc happens, Singcho will also regenerate 3 energy. So over the course of his burst, you can kind of generate like 12 to 15 energy for Singcho which is pretty damn good. For the talent of great priority, his elemental burst is the most important part of his kit. So make sure to level this as much as you can before moving on to his other talents. His elemental skill is secondary. However, if you're playing some setup where you can, you know, vape Sing Cho's E after casting his burst and you have C4 and stuff, then it can be better. But even then, you always want to prioritize Sing Cho's burst first. And after that, you can level the skill as much as you'd like. His normal attacks can really be ignored. You'd never ever use them. I just did it up to 6 because it's quite cheap. For the weapon options, you want to prioritize getting an ER weapon. However, do keep in mind that if you have some other Hydro teammates available in the team that can generate Hydro energy, then you might be able to get away with using Aminoma or some other attack percent offensive sword for your Singcho. Now Singcho's best in slots are Favonius Sword and the Sacrificial Sword. So first of all, let's talk about Favonius. Now the Favonius Sword is an amazing option for Singcho. It gives a lot of energy recharge and generates a lot of energy for your team as well. The problem with Favonius Sword is that if your Singcho is not C6, then it might not be as good as the Sacrificial Sword because it generates white particles and they will not be restoring as much energy to your Singcho as opposed to getting a second skill from Sacrificial which will give you a lot of Hydro Particles. So just keep that in mind. However, if you can manage the Energy Recharge or if your Singcho is C6, then Favonia Sword is more often than not the better option. And now the Sacrificial Sword is the most widely used Singcho weapon because it synergizes with him pretty well. Now keep in mind if you do not have it at at least Refinement Rank 3, then you will not be able to proc its passive every rotation. You will have to proc it every other rotation so that might reduce your uh, total output that you're getting from the sword. It can feel a little cope at times. However, uh, if you are struggling to meet the energy requirements, then sacrificial will generally be the best option for your Singcho regardless of your refinement level. The sacrificial gives you the same amount of energy as the Favonius. It generates more energy for your Singcho. But that comes at the cost of generating less energy for your team as opposed to using Favonius. But it's still a very good option on him nonetheless. And if you are playing Singcho in a team where you can vape his elemental skill and you have a C4, then the Sacrificial can help you unload a lot of damage upwards of 400k, even half a million pretty easily. So that's pretty good. It's completely fine if you do not have the Favonius or Sacrificial. I know these are gacha weapons. So in that case, you can go with the Fontaine Craftable Flu Sand Ferryman. It's a pretty good option for Singcho because you are going to be catching his particles right after using the elemental skill. And for that duration, it gives you an additional 32% energy recharge on top of the base 45% while also having a decent base attack. So it's all in all a pretty good option if you are free to play and you do not have any other option available. Now let's talk about the artifact options for your Singcho. There are two main artifact options you should be considering. If your team can use the attack buff from Noblesse, but you do not have a already a Noblesse user on the team, then giving Singcho Noblesse is a pretty good option. The two piece is very useful for him, and the four piece is useful for him as well, while also helping the rest of your team. I would definitely recommend you use the Noblesse. But if you already do have a Noblesse holder on the team, or maybe your team just does not need the attack buff from Noblesse, then his best set is undoubtedly going to be the Emblem of Severed Fate. The two piece is very good for him because it gives him energy recharge and the four piece is also pretty good because most of Singcho's damage comes from his burst and the set gives him burst damage bonus based on the energy recharge that you have. But if you do not have a four piece set, that's completely okay. You can just mix and match two piece combinations. Look for set bonuses that give you Burst damage, so 2 piece noblesse, hydro damage bonus, so the name stream or the heart of death, and attack percent, as well as 2 piece emblem because the energy charge can be very much useful even though it's not an offensive stat. 
something I would like to mention about his artifacts is that you don't necessarily need to farm a 4 piece set for him because at the end of the day he's not the majority of your damage. He's only a small part of your team's total damage output so him doing 10% or 20% less damage isn't really that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. For the artifact stats, you want to go Hydro Damage Goblet, Crit Rate or Crit Damage Circulate depending upon whichever you need more of. And for the Sands, it is between Energy Recharge or Attack Percent depending upon what you need. If you are struggling to get your burst back on time, then prioritize getting Energy Recharge on your Sands. But if you can manage, then go Attack Percent for more damage. Always prioritize getting energy recharge in your sub stats first before aiming for the offensive stats. As a general rule, without a Favonia Sword and a Solo Hydro in the team, you want to aim for about 250% energy recharge so you can burst off cooldown every rotation. If you do have Favonias, then the requirements can fall down to about 200 to 220%, and if you have a Sacrificial Sword, R3 or more, then they will significantly drop down to below 200%. His C6 also lowers his energy requirements by 15-20%. to 20%. Now keep in mind that these are rough estimates for your energy requirements. They will increase or decrease depending upon the team that you are playing Shincho in. Just make sure to build enough energy recharge so that you can get his burst back. Because I've seen some people trying to make their Sincho do damage when they cannot even get their burst back. You should absolutely not do that because Sincho is not that big part of your team's damage overall. But his burst is indeed very very important for your team to get their damage. Now for the team options, Sincho is an amazing Hydro support. So naturally he has an abundance of teams. I can't really cover all the team variations because there are quite literally so many. I would need to make multiple hours long video to cover each team option to be honest. So I will quickly just tell you what kind of teams you can play him in. So basically uh, if you are playing a team and it has a Hydro slot, then you can slot in Singcho in there and it will most likely be an upgrade. Because Singcho applies a lot of Hydro and gives you a lot of defensive utility while also dealing a lot of damage from off field. So you can essentially play in pretty much any Hyper Bloom, Bloom, Burgeon, Freeze, Mono Hydro, Vape, Electro Charge and yeah all those teams. I will tell you a couple teams that I regularly play Singcho in and I think are pretty good so you can give them a try if you want. First up is a taser variation that I like to play which is Kazuha Official Beido Singcho. Now this team I just like a lot, I equip Kazuha with Sacrificial as well. There's a lot of sword and chain reaction damage from him. And your enemies also get pretty much stun locked because of electro charge, they can't really attack you. And you're super tanky because Singcho has a lot of damage reduction, Beido has damage reduction, Beido gives you a otherwise weak shield which is made 4 times as tanky because of their damage reduction. So overall this team feels pretty good to play, it also has electro resonance, facial generates a lot of energy, Kazuha generates a lot of energy, so there's not uh, much of an energy issue either within the units. Overall it's a fun team that I like to play sometimes here and there. Uh, you can replace these units. I am just giving you examples of the types of teams that I play him in so you can get an idea of what you can play as well. I also play Hyper Bloom with him a lot in a double Hydro team with Yalan, Kuki and Nahida. Of course, feel free to replace these units. Again, this is only an example. But this team just has a very good single target damage and it's pretty easy and branded to play so I like to play it. A team that I have a lot of fun playing him in is the Burgeon teams. Now there are mainly three types that I play. First where Kazuha is the Burgeon trigger, I do not like it that much these days. Bennett as the Burgeon trigger is pretty good though, but my favorite one is using Razor as the Burgeon trigger. The reason I like Singcho when I'm playing Burgeon type teams is because Burgeon teams tend to trigger burning and Singcho having a lot better Hydro application than Yelan on Farina makes it so that I can put that burning out faster and generate more seeds and deal more damage. Of course, we also have the good old wave teams. You can play pretty much any pyro carry with Singcho as the hydro enabler for them. 
so even gaming the look who tao shang ling everybody just pretty much works with him and he applies a lot of hydro so you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to be getting waves all of the time you can also play sing cho as your hyper carry which is funny i guess uh, it it's not really super good it's not really that good of a team honestly at least it was not until Xian Yun came along and now Sing Cho is a pretty good carry <laughs> because everybody is. So just pair him up with C6 Bennett, Furina and Xian Yun and yeah, you have a pretty damn good pyro carry because Sing Cho applies Hydro himself as well and generates energy for Furina. He has pretty good synergy with the team as well and he can also spam plunges so the slow Hydro from Furina is not really an issue for him. And you can probably tell by now that he is one of my favorite carries to pair up with Xian Yun. <laughs> I enjoyed it a lot. You should try it as well if you do have it. Now that's the types of teams that I like to play with Sing Cho. But obviously, like I mentioned earlier, there's, there are tons and tons of team variations that you can do with him. So feel free to mess around here and there. And if you think there is something that I missed in the guide in any section, then feel free to leave a comment about it as well. That will be it for my Sing Cho guide and if you enjoyed the way then like and subscribe. See you next time.